My life was all in order They tossed a hand grenade I thought I might be dreaming But you didn't say I thought if I ignored you Maybe you just might go away Isn't it just my luck? Trust those trogs, man. They fight dirty, you know what I'm saying? Now, look, why don't you just leave your little toys inside here, okay? You remember our agreement? Inside your closet, you can do all the magic you want. All right, okay. Outside, it's the real world. Keep my favorite motor. Why so edgy? Chabot. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. Say, man, you can't fool me. I'm a genius, okay? And I know something's bothering you. Nothing is bothering you. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. Okay, if you say nothing's bothering you, then nothing's bothering you. You're cool, you're calm, you got everything under control, huh? It's my writings. They stink. That's the Bob, still killing you, huh? Oh, he's killing everybody. He's got twice the audience I have. He's got twice the gimmick. Hey, Keith, man, you can't give up, man. You gotta fight back. You have got to get yourself a gimmick. You know, I was thinking about this last night. I think I got a way to go. Humor. I'm gonna be the funny weatherman. I don't know about that, Keith, man. I, you know, what do you mean? I'm a funny guy. Well, yeah, man, you funny around the house. But are you TV funny? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Listen to this, listen. Okay, write it down. This is a weather joke. Man. All right. Okay. The fog on the beach was so thick this morning. <laughs> You couldn't cut it with Joan Rivers' tongue. <laughs> what was the punchline? That was the punchline. That's not funny, man. Oh, come on, that's hilarious. Keith, that stinks. That is a monster joke. Well, don't take my word for it. The Comedy Show proudly presents Keith and Shabu. Hey, Keith, I haven't seen you all day. Well, no wonder you haven't seen me all day. It's been foggy. How foggy was it? The fog was so thick, you couldn't cut through it with Joan Rivers' tongue. Ah! Hey, whoa! Hey, whoa! Hey, I can't believe these people never heard of Joan Rivers. <laughs> wow, we were terrible. <laughs> we? What's this we stuff? Hey, man, it was your material? Keith. It stinks. <laughs> Maybe you should become the singing weatherman. No, no, comedy is the answer. I just got to work on the jokes, that's all. I got to go. See you later. I'm going to work. Are you going to split with eggplant on your jacket? <laughs> hey, hey, thanks, man. 
Hey, that's what I'm here for. That's my weather board. Where you where are you going with that? Down the hall. Where are you Yeah, Jerry, when I say it's gonna be thunder and lightning in the northeast, then hit it. <laughs> you call this lightning? This is high school lightning. Now fix it. Professor Bob? Hey, Keith, baby! How in the heck are you? <laughs> How do you like it? What's going on? Brand new job, brand new gimmick. New job? Ye old weather window. Nice touch, huh? <laughs> Professor Bob, go back to, to new job. What is this about a new job? Holy mackerel, you mean they didn't tell you? Oh, gosh, you must feel terrible. You know, Keith, in the past, we've been competitors. But now, well, if you ever need to talk, you can count on me. When did this... But not now. I had to work out some bugs in the old weather window. Okay, Jerry, now let's get set to rehearse the talking moon, okay? You call this a talking moon? Where the heck is its tongue? Gosh, you guys don't get anything straight. Ah, <laughs> got it, Megan. Sometimes you really puzzle me. How is it that we can get rid of Burroughs by promoting him? I mean, that doesn't make sense. Nelson. We both want Professor Bob as our weatherman, right? Yes. But Keith has a contract to be our weatherman. True. Now, if we fire Keith, we have to pay off his contracts. That's thousands of dollars out the window. Whoosh! Now, do you want that to happen? I'd rather eat dirt. That's why we're going to promote him to roving reporter. Once he accepts that promotion, we're out of the contract. We can fire him anytime we want. And we don't have to pay him one red cent. That's right! <laughs> I love it. I love you. Oh, Nelson, Nelson, let's keep it professional at work. Megan, Megan. I know we agreed not to discuss it, but just what is it between us anyway? I mean, is it true love or just some animal thing? Well, Nelson, it, it has elements of both. Uh, it's true animal love. Good enough. Nelson! Keith! Don't you know how to knock? Nelson, I know you hate me, but I thought you would spare me the humiliation of having my own replacement tell me I'm fired. Congratulations, Keith. What? Sit. We're what? both very, very happy for you. What? For getting fired? What kind of sick people are you? No, silly. We're celebrating your promotion. My promotion? Roving reporter. Isn't that great? <laughs> we were thinking of adding the spot to the news for a long time, but we needed someone with a fresh point of view. Hmm. New project, new face. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it, really? Of course. Now, if you don't think you can handle it. Oh, no, no problem. I'm your man. It's just, it, it's so sudden. Well, that's what this TV business is all about. Sudden, instantaneous, exciting. Am I right? Yes. I'm excited most of the time. Well, I, I don't know how to thank you. You can thank us by bringing us a dynamite audition tape. I will. I have to do an audition tape? Well, naturally. Even Geraldo Rivera had to audition. <laughs> You're not putting yourself above Geraldo Rivera, are you? No. No, no, no. I, I, I guess not. Good. Then it's up. Bring me a story that's high concept. It's got to have heat, plus a woman's angle. I want that in there. And don't forget the Orientals. Oh, no. Very important part of our demographics. Right. And have it in here by three on Friday. Oh, well, uh, but that's only three days away. Uh -huh. Geraldo did it in two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Check it out, Chuck. They're just about to find out that it wasn't Lamont who poisoned the bishop. The bishop got poisoned? That's right, man. But a secret twin brother, Bert. I got it. I got it. Okay. I did. I was right. It was Bert. How do you know that? 
I can tell by that little scar behind his ear. Why didn't you come to me first? All right, Lamont, I knew you were clean. You guys watching this stuff for? Check this out. Hey, keep what are you doing, man? You just ain't coming here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, You want to see something great? Check out my audition tape. Oh, that was the best part. Hi, I'm Keith Burroughs, and I would like to reintroduce you to a familiar face. Now, this may be somebody you haven't seen in a while, but the minute you hear this voice, you're going to know exactly who I'm talking about. Oh, boy. It's going to be a hot time in the old barn tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. Give me the talking horse. I thought he was a goner. <laughs> well, Timmy, now, you've been out of show business for quite a while now. Do you ever miss the glamour and the lights? Well, I miss the glamour, but I sure don't miss the lights. <laughs> I remember one time I, I backed right into an art lamp. <laughs> Damn near fried my flanks. <laughs> you want to see? <laughs> oh, no, that's okay, Timmy. So, tell me, Timmy, you must have a lot of wonderful memories, but do you ever remember a time when you wish you hadn't gone into show business? Well, there's just one time. I was having lunch once, and when I looked up, there was Orson Welles coming right at me with a saddle. That'll scare the oats right out of you. This is downright pitiful. Hey, what are you doing? Is this your audition tape? Are you going to hang your future on this? Well, why not? This is a great human interest story. Check this in. Does he look interested? <laughs> It's sort of like an Andy Rooney bit. You know, something light to tag the news. I wrote it. I even did Timmy's voice. Nelson's gonna love this tape. He's gotta love it. If he's gotta love it, he's gonna love it. You're going to love this, Nelson. What are you doing? I thought I'd stay while you watch my tape. Burroughs, I'm a very complex man. I don't like to be watched when I watch. <laughs> Can't really explain why. I don't have to. I'm the boss. Go home. I'll call you. <laughs> You like it. So do I, Burroughs. So do I. Hi, I'm Keith Burroughs, and I would like to reintroduce you to a familiar face. Now, this may be somebody you haven't seen in a while. The minute you hear this voice, you're going to know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> I am a nudist. I have always been a nudist. <laughs> Mr. Kissinger, this is an astounding revelation. It's not so astounding, Keith. Thanks to me, many people in Washington have become nudists. What? Nixon was a nudist. <laughs> he was the first. He was always fat. Queen Elizabeth would go skinny dipping from time to time. So are you saying that official government business was conducted in the nude? Absolutely. Every Monday morning, we would all meet at Camp David. We would rip off our clothes and scamper through the sprinkles. It was a beautiful experience <laughs> when Gola was there. On those mornings, I would sleep late. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Keith Burroughs for KPOX News. This is terrific. This is terrific. This is the story of the decade. <laughs> Genie code. A man always offers his ugliest daughter first. What? If you're desperate, damn. You got a ring, man. Let a ring. You're right. <laughs> Hello? See you. All right, be cool. Hi. Oh, really? You're kidding. You're not kidding. He's not kidding. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, no, no, no. That's terrific. I'm very happy. All right, thank you. Thanks. Oh, he loves it. Oh, I knew he would.
would. He thinks it's the story of the decade. I knew he would. He's going to put it on the 6 o'clock news tonight. Whoa, I didn't know that. And <laughs> he's invited the entire board of directors down to the... What do you mean, whoa? I didn't know that. Something's wrong here. What'd you do? <laughs> you know what, Keith, man? This is really funny. A couple of years from now, we're going to be able to sit back and just laugh at all of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you screwed up my story, didn't you? Hey, Keith, what kind of guy do you think I am, man? I wouldn't screw up your story. I screwed up Nelson. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, man, he was looking at Timmy the horse, but he was seeing Henry Kissinger. Big deal. He was only in the nude. You got, uh, do you remember the, uh... That's the old for the six o'clock. <laughs> now, sir. Nelson, Nelson, we've got an emergency. No, Keith, there are no emergencies. Not tonight. Now, come in, keep smiling, shut up. Finish your taco? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jim Dexter with the news. We're going to begin with a special report from the newest addition to our KPOX news team, our roving reporter, Keith Burrows. Keith? Hi, I'm Keith Burrows, and I would like to reintroduce you to a familiar face. Now, this may be somebody you haven't seen in a while, but the minute you hear this voice, you're going to know exactly who I'm talking about. Oh, boy. It's going to be a hot time in the old barn tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, Rose, what the hell is this? Where's Kissinger? My guess would be New York. <laughs> well, I mean, that's fine, but I sure don't miss the lights. I remember one time I backed right into an arc lamp, damn near fried my flanks. You want to see? <laughs> no, no, that's okay, Tim. <laughs> so, tell me, Tim, you must have a lot of wonderful memories. But do you ever remember a time when you wish you hadn't gone into show business? I was having lunch once. When I looked up, there was Orson Welles coming right at me with a saddle. That'll scare the oats right out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, Timmy. So tell me, Timmy, uh, do you have many grandchildren? No, none. So you're a bachelor? No, I'm a gelding. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm as sorry as I am. <laughs> well, I hope my little visit tonight with Timmy the Talking Horse has brought back memories of a time in your lives when the world wasn't quite so terrifying. This is Keith Burroughs for KPOX News. Uh, thank you, Keith, for that uh, interesting report. Getting back to the news. A trainload of toxic chemicals was derailed today just outside of Saginaw, Michigan. Authorities are looking into the unforeseen tragedy and hope to have some answers for the shocks and happenings as to how and why this careless act... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure this can all be explained by Nelson. Yes, uh, well, uh, Burroughs talked me into it. He, he said people have animals. And he's got a point. Uh, animals and plane crashes, you can't beat them for viewer interest. If you could get a plane to crash into an animal, why, you win the sweeps. <laughs> You're out. You are history. Let me explain. Mr. Benson, explain this. Mr. Benson, please. Mr. Benson, please. You're giving up? You're not gonna fight for your story? A story that you believe in? Yep, that about sums it up. Keith, not only is that disappointing, it's un-American. Think back to the Revolutionary War, when the British marched on Trenton. And did General Washington give up? Hell no, he ambushed them. What 
about the settlers. Now, Keith, they went through hell trying to settle the West. I'm talking about blizzards, hostile Indians. Did they give up? Not a chance. <laughs> the railroad. Keith, what if great men like John Henry had been laying down on the job instead of laying down that track? Hey, John, take five. <laughs> Chapeau, you have really flipped. Maybe I have flipped out, Keith, but this man hasn't. Keith, listen to Shabu. He knew what was happening four score and seven years ago, and he knows what's happening now. So get out there and take care of business. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Any time, Shabu. Hold it, everybody. Just hold it, OK? Now, it's clear that you didn't think too much of my story. Well, I think you're wrong, and I'd like to tell you why. Shut up, Burroughs. Let him talk. Speak up, Burroughs. <laughs> All right. Now, you come home after a hard day at work. You turn on the news. Bang, they hit you with a murder. Bang, they hit you with the economy. Bang, bang, they hit you with terrorism. You start to feel like some kind of old punch-drunk fighter. All I want to do is give the viewer a little break. I just want to remind them that life isn't all muggings and hijackings. Sometimes you just got to give them something to smile about. You know what? I like this kid. Give him the job. He's always my first choice. <laughs> Mine, too. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Next stop for us, the big time. Hey. Champagne, anybody? There you go. <laughs> you know, I still can't believe that all those high-ranking officials are nudists. Actually, that was all a bunch of jive. Just my sense of humor. I've always been kind of a pixie. Pixie? <laughs> <laughs>